the grace to begin the Christian's war of defense with holy fasts. This is how we ended our prayers after we received ashes. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. We could almost sense our Lord Jesus going up that plateaued mountain slightly north of Jericho to begin his 40 days and 40 nights of battle in the spiritual war. He's climbing up that mountain now, and we would like to sit with him for a few minutes before we progress onwards in this battle in these next 40 days. We would like to maybe sit back and reflect on three principal ideas so as to give us a little incentive to unite ourselves to that Christ to work. Because remember, His abstinence is ours. His attention to prayer is easy accessible by us. His self-denial is now prolonged within our minds and hearts through this mystical body. We ourselves are there with Christ, in Christ. And so I'd like to see these three ideas. The first idea would be that of mortification for love of Christ. And then fasting for the love of Christ. And then finally, the corporal and spiritual works of mercy for love of Christ. First, mortification. As you know, mortification is crucial for us in the spiritual life, especially for those who are beginning, those who are in a purgative stage, when they first receive their conversion, when they first draw near to the Lord after many years of being away. But it's not exclusively for the purgative stage. Mortification will be for every stage of our life, but especially for that first stage of our spiritual combat. Now when we speak of mortification, we can also speak of penance. The great author, Father Adolf Tancare, from the beginning of the 20th century, in his great book, Spiritual Life, explains the little tiny difference between penance and mortification. Basically, it's the same thing, but penance refers to expiating, uh, mortifying ourselves, self-denying for the sake of our past. Whereas mortification is for our present and for our future. So therefore we're trying to put everything back in order. We're trying to form habits and virtues and get away from those vices. So what's the definition of mortification? It's our struggle against evil inclinations in order to subject them to the superiority of our will and reason. So all those little meager little feelings, reactions, whims, likes, dislikes, spontaneous appetites, disordered passions, all those things that come out of us in our thoughts and our reactions and our speech and our actions that grow up against the perfections of Christ. So our spontaneous fallen nature. So we need to discipline that nature. And not only that, but not only to submit our inner struggles to our reason and our willpower, but above all, to submit them to the holy will of God, which is the most important thing. To submit ourselves to God in all things. I would like to quote St. John of the Cross that perhaps will enhance our prayer as we ask at the beginning of this Lent for a spirit of mortification for love of Christ. This is from his spiritual canticle 1-3 when he was sitting in jail of his monastery for nine months. He wrote this beautiful spiritual canticle. Whoever seeks God while wanting to hold on to his likes and dislikes may seek Him all day and all night, but will never find Him. As long as we keep dabbling around with our disordered passions, likes and dislikes, putting those things as the first and foremost, 
We will never find God no matter how hard we search. Our second reflection is that of fasting for love of Christ. It's a form of mortification. We're denying ourselves food and drink. Oh boy, that's not fun, huh? Have you ever really fasted on bread and water for an entire day? And you feel extremely weak, dizzy maybe? That's not fun. But oh, if we look at the definition or some effects of fasting that St. Francis de Sales gives us, we might become enthusiastic about fasting. And some of us may be on medication, some of us may be older, we can't fast like with bread and water. We can perhaps skip a meal, skip a dessert for love of Christ. And if we do these types of things, especially in this Lent, Watch what could happen. Look at St. Francis de Sales. He says, listen to this. Watch this. When we fast for love of Christ, we raise our souls up to God. It becomes a beautiful prayer. We come in contact with God. We raise up our soul to God. That's a grace. But we can nudge that grace by our fasting. Isn't that beautiful? And then he also says it sweeps away concupiscence. The triple concupiscence that St. John's epistle tells us about. The concupiscence of the flesh, of the eye, of the heart, that anger and proud and arrogance and also lusts. And sometimes these things are very sticky and sometimes these things do not go away very easily. They, they're very stubborn and they keep at us. But if we do a little bit of fasting with love of Christ, they become like little bow-legged old senile gnats. Just shush them away. They become nothing. Like paper mache, just brush them off with ease and grace and elegance. Wouldn't that be something, especially you young people? Oh, Father, I'm so tempted I can't resist. Well, skip your dessert maybe one time. Do it for love of Jesus, and boy, you will become not a mind sweeper, but a concupiscent sweeper. You'll get all that stuff out the way says St. Francis de Sales. And then, fasting also prepares our heart, disposes our hearts to seek only Jesus and Mary. To seek God. Oh, how our hearts are restless, huh? Nagging around complaining about a hundred and thousand things. If only our hearts can say, oh, that's what I'm after. And I can care less about the other things that pop in, surprise me, disappoint me, depress me, uh, confuse me. Our hearts will be ready, sharpened toward Christ, the Blessed Sacrament, Christ, our Blessed Lady. And then our third and final point, as we reflect, as we ascend that plateaued mountain there near Jericho, where Christ will spend his 40 days and 40 nights. Spiritual and corporal works of mercy. We should try to take trips down to the nursing home, to the prisons, to the soup kitchens, to serve Christ and our neighbors. But before we put too much mileage on the car, we should pay attention to all those little prisoners and all those little sicklings and all those little confused and depressed people in our households and in our neighbors, in our communities, right nearby. 
how many of your own flesh and blood sit next to you is in great need of, of encouragement or advice or a, a piece of good uh, sharing. St. John Chrysostom has a great quote that perhaps we should consider this. When he speaks about fasting, I quote, Do you fast? He asks. Prove it by doing good works. If you see someone in need, take pity upon him. If you see a friend being honored, don't get jealous of him. For a true fast, listen to this, a true fast. You cannot fast only with your mouth. So it's not just a question of going around without bread or without food or without banquets. You cannot fast only with your mouth. You must fast with your eyes and with your ears and with your feet and with your hands and all parts of your body. Constantly denying ourselves, using all these members of our bodies to deny ourselves. But our little feet will tell us that, oh, we have this person over there who needs my help, needs my advice, needs a piece of Jesus that I'm going to give it to him. Once more, and once again in this life, Christ will go up that mountain and spend those 40 days after 2,017 years of doing this in his mystical body every year, it seems as though he has less and less people who wish to go up with him. No. Would it be that here in this very congregation, we'll have at least two or three who really want to accompany Christ in those arduous 40 days in penance, mortification, prayer, conversion. Let us continue this holy sacrifice to the Mass, asking our Blessed Lady to give us that grace to consider these three points that we just mentioned and to ask Our Lady as we cling on the communion rail today and receive the Holy Host, may the Blessed Virgin convince Christ for us to grant us the grace of total and absolute generosity. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.